and we're going to ta start talking about Jacqueline Ruby's car wash incident, which started all with this photograph that you see blown up here. Um, maybe I'm just going to interrupt very a little bit there, just to say that the whole talk is going to be a little bit about photographs and how we use photographs. And Isn't how you it? believe in them, how you interpret them yeah. and believe in them. Um, so four years ago we met Jack and Lee Ruby. Um, they had never made, called themselves artists and never really done what they called visual art before or film art, but they had done something else. They had existed as con artists doing, creating evidence for people who needed to make claims with insurance companies. So if somebody needed to get some money from their insurance company, but nothing really happened, Jack and Lee would help them create the evidence so they could make the claim with the police and the insurance company. They did this quite successfully for about 25 years. Um, we met them when they were about to get out of jail. They were in jail in Australia. Since they finally got caught after doing this successfully. Um, in the late 90s, they got caught. They went to jail for about 10 years. And this is a very early evidentiary photo. So they made portfolios of evidence that then whoever could show the police and the insurance companies to prove that something had happened. We saw this uh, photo of them that they shot, that they shot, not of them, but that they made in the 70s as a group of pictures that they had made for their friend who needed to make an insurance claim that his store had been robbed. And so based on that and speaking to them about the sort of art direction that they did and the stagings they did, we realized that they could also be making film and video art and they, were also, they also understood that. And so we started speaking to them about should they make something for the art world and they were very interested, they were getting out of jail, they needed to recreate their life in a new way. I mean, I think they'd understood as well that there wasn't a whole lot of difference between creating evidence for an insurance scam and creating evidence for an art audience, uh, for an audience to kind of believe in or not believe in. Uh, and I think it's sort of important to point out here um, one of the things that we be believe quite strongly is that, and uh, I'm sure maybe many of you do, um, that, that an audience um, is really part of the completion of an artwork in the same way that a piece of evidence has to be interpreted by, say, the police or the insurance investigators or whatever. And so there are many similarities between um, what they were doing, the kind of thing they were making, and the kind of things that artists make. Right. Well, I mean, one of the journalists who talked to us last night was talking a lot with us about the about belief. And so much of what goes on when you see evidence or even when you see a movie is belief. You have to believe in it. You have to trust it. And so they created things that people felt like they could believe in or felt like they could trust. They suggested a reality. And so what we suggested, actually what Simon suggested to them, is, well, let's take this reality that you created in, 19, in the 1970s but, and do a new artwork with this reality. But instead of, um, instead of doing it just once, let's do it twice. Let's double it. So we'll double everything. So we, we suggested to them, they would, we would help them produce the piece. They would direct the video art. Also, that you should understand, these guys are in their 60s. They were recreating and re-emerging as visual artists in the art world and not young. And after ten, more than 10 years in jail. And so the thing Simon suggested to them so brilliantly is why don't you double the setting of this photo? And so what But not just the setting, um, also the characters. As you can see in the photo, there are four... Right. Well, yeah, you, can, you can't really see the driver, uh, but you can assume there's a, a driver. So we have four characters. Um, and so it was the idea was basically, um, let's really make the same world twice. Right, so there's a driver, a mother, a woman in red, and a man in a black suit. And so what we did as producers was figure out how to really build these two worlds for real in the real world. And so the first thing we had to do was model it, get the scale right, understand the location where we could build it, very similar to the way you do location scout on a normal movie. But of course, on a, in a, we're not going to find two street corners parallel to each other. So we had to find one street corner and then create a fake. As you can see, we're also expert model makers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what we found actually was an old car mechanic who agreed to rent us the lot. 
And we started building what you see exactly in that photo, exactly to scale, but instead of, as Simon pointed out, not one world, but two worlds. So we're, we're building this sign, the first car wash sign here, the second car wash sign there. The real road is, is here somewhere. And this is, a, this is a real sidewalk, this is a fake road, this is fake grass, this is a fake sidewalk, and this is another fake road. The fake roads and the sidewalks are all made out of carpet. Uh, which is painted. painted with gallons and gallons of paint. Right. Uh, Not just paint. It's concrete, well, paint, yeah. sand. We created a whole real, real fake. And so by the end, we had these two worlds with everything doubled exactly as in the photograph. The scale of the signs, the scale of the garbage cans, the, um, the, hydrants. the fire hydrant, the telephone posts, the arrows, the two roads, the two sidewalks, the whole thing. Um, there was this double world. We show you a little bit how we built it. As producers, that was our job. These guys were the directors. We had to produce the world, and we did. And so then, we had to find everything. So the first thing is, these cars are from 1973. These are two Oldsmobile station wagons, Vista cruisers. These are now classic cars, because they're not easy to find. So we had to search all over America to find these two cars. And as you notice, they were blue and brown, and in the original photo, they're beige, they're off-white. So we had to find the cars, and then we wrap them in vinyl very carefully to make them look exactly the right color, but they are identical cars from 1973. And then we had to cast everyone based on these photos, and so this is one of our actors, Jim White, he's actually not an actor, he's a famous drummer, but we thought, he walks around in this schlumpy, bad-looking suit every day of his life, so he was perfect. Um, actually, just on a, a, a note about that, uh, in a lot of the stuff that you're going to see, we do use actors. Um, but they're not, um, very many of the people we use are not actors, if you understand what I'm saying. What I mean is that we, we, we cast people who've never acted before quite often. And although um, Jim is perfectly at home being on stage as a drummer, uh, he's not an actor. And in this case we had someone who was not an actor and someone who was a quite seasoned actor playing the red girl because as we said we cast everything twice. The cars, the people, the set, every, everything had to exist as two. And so it was also I think interesting to realize we were doubling things but we weren't trying to make the actors exist exactly as twins. We wanted to give the assumption that you're seeing everything twice but then if you look more carefully you realize oh they're not the same. But people, you assume things so quickly that you think everybody's a twin. And only when you look more closely, when you really start to investigate, you realize the two worlds are quite different. So there's our two actors playing the red girl. And then there's this whole mystery about a plastic bag. If you look at the original photo, the telling thing of that photo that Jack and Lee made, the thing that seemed so suspicious was what's going on in the plastic well, bag. Well, for those of you who didn't, haven't seen the show yet, when you, uh, hopefully you will. And when you do, you'll realize that a lot of what goes on is somehow about this plastic bag. And so. what's written on the bag, and we had to invent what's written on the bag, and actually our, the woman who became our prop master did a whole history about plastic bags. In the 70s, plastic bags were kind of a luxury item. They hadn't existed. And so suddenly, only really kind of fancy shops have plastic bags. And here you see, she even found on the internet the sack of the future. People, now we think plastic bags are so horrible, they're full of pollution, they're littering up the ocean. But in the 60s and 70s, it was a big deal to carry a plastic bag. And so what's written on the plastic bag? Well, there's the photo, you can't really tell. So she invented this Hustler Boots logo, and then the idea of what's in the plastic bag became very important. And if you go see the piece in Axioma, you'll understand the importance of that. And then we had to figure out actually, well, what's happening? Here's our two worlds, doubled. This is the actual production, the camera's on the crane, you see the two red girls, the two men in black, the two mothers getting out of the car, the two sons are driving, and also, what I'll just point out, then Simon will talk, all of the actors have lavalier microphones, so they're all having conversations, and they're all given a job to do, a task, and a character, but we didn't tell them what to say. And so their dialogues are completely improvised, and that became better and better as the day went on. You going to go? Oh. No, I was, all I was going to say was, um, just out of interest, it's shot on 35 millimeter film. It's shot on proper film. And so we worked with a choreographer on this, uh, uh, who's a Portuguese choreographer who's based in Berlin, named Claudia de Serpa. And she, and one of the actors actually, came up with a real blocking and a choreography for the cars and for the actors. So the actors knew who they were, they knew their character, 
And they knew where they had to go. They knew their job. They knew their task. But we didn't tell them what they had to say, and we didn't tell them how to say it. They got this just from knowing what they had to do and knowing who they are. To some extent, we, um, we gave them kind of relationships, uh, you know, just to, to a very small degree. But um, the way that this worked, we had shot for one day. Uh, we rehearsed maybe for two days before that. Yeah. I can't remember. Um, but we only shot for one day. And um, everything you see uh, in, in the gallery or the piece, uh, the installation, is pretty much a continuous shot. There's very little editing, There's no editing. Of, um, of a shot, of a, of a whole take. They're continuous takes. The so. takes were six minutes long. So um, here you see the path of the choreography, and that's what Simon's saying, the path. What the actors had to do and what the cars had to do took about six minutes. So like the thick line here is one car, there's another car up there. This is actually not the final choreography, we realized when we were digging around looking for material. But it gives you the idea. It gives you the idea. And then Jack and Lee were both, Jack was actually with our crane operator, directing the crane operator, because when you're on a crane like this, a movie crane like this, that crane is telescoping and moving and it's all remote control. And then Lee was talking more to the actors, and then she ended up also jumping in as an actor. So this is what you see in production, right? And then there, again, there's the choreography, and then there's a production shot, shot by one of our photographers. So you see the two worlds doubled, very much like what you saw in the earlier slide. So Jack and Lee couldn't be here in Ljubljana, so we came and installed for them, but they did do a great, um, they did a great interview with Swedish television. I don't want to talk about the scams, if that's all right. Well, we understand. I, I understand. I don't know if you guys understand it. <laughs> Thanks, I'm glad. Och det finns heller inte några bevis kvar. Ett fotografi som arrangerades 1975 för att lura till sig pengar är allt som bevarats. This is the original shot. Yeah, that the Where was that? Is based on. This is actually in Troy, New York. So we set up a robbery so that he could get insurance money to get the liquor license and open a bar instead. That's why it's nice that there is this aspect to it now. But ever since menopause set in, <laughs> I can't take the stress anymore. <laughs> I so, don't blame you. <laughs> I don't blame it was, you. A, it was a, a young person's game, Jack. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no question about that. We certainly could have fared a lot worse, but it caused us to rethink, it caused us to take a turn. It began to seem more and more similar, and I became curious that perhaps there's a more legitimate approach to something that's very much what we're doing anyway. Som är utgångspunkt från det här gamla fotografiet skapade syskonen Ruby sin debutfilm. Eftersom de satt i fängelse på andra sidan jorden var det Eve och Simon som gjorde förberedelserna. Men förra sommaren var de fria och konstverket kunde spelas in här i Jersey City. I could never have imagined that it would get the response that People come up and, and say such complimentary things at, at times that you really feel that like, I don't know if that's that's a bit extreme and I don't know, this is not genius. <laughs> this is not genius. We kind of joke a little bit that, you know, they lived the life of fraud and they continue to live the life of fraud in the art world because the art world Okay, well there's Jack and Lee so for you. We're kind of purposely not showing the piece here in the lecture in the hope. That, um, the, pe the, the people um, who haven't seen it yet will go to see it uh, because the production value obviously is so much better than what you're seeing here. Yeah, no, definitely go see it in the gallery. It's not far away.